my name is Simran and I'm one of the change makers for the FAIR Project 2021. In today's Reason and Rationalize in session, the topic that I've chosen to speak about is titled Taming Artificial Intelligence that is Deployed for Conflict Prevention and Peace Processes from the Point of View of International Humanitarian Law and Human. So before proceeding upon uh, the topic and dissecting it, the reason why I chose this topic was because during the A and the I sessions, I had the chance to critically engage and immerse myself in the stakeholder analysis of peace processes by, in, by analyzing a lot of case studies, past events, studying about violence, recent happenings, events that have shook, shook up uh, global peace uh, and uh, the trajectory of turmoil. So the way the Sustainable Development Goal 16 by United Nations defines peace is the mission to build inclusive and prosperous societies to be having institutions that are accountable and strong and accessible to all. Now, in my view, this idea of peace com comprising of a dream of uh, a just and equal society, an accessible society, having strong institutions that protect the rights of citizens, I feel that in the times that we are living in, with the onslaught of artificial intelligence, it threatens and challenges the very foundations on which the idea of the global peace and global justice is found. Hence, I thought that this topic occupies predominance uh, and it needs discussion because um, I could not find a rationale or, uh, or, or an end solution to it, but I definitely did find a lot of reasoning and a lot to discuss. So to begin with, artificial intelligence is basically a system or a capability that, that is a capability that defines the ability of a computer program to perform those tasks, uh, to, to undertake those tasks that are usually associated with uh, human intelligence and human ability. Um, AI is essentially a system that is driven by automation and is undertaken by sophisticated algorithms in a uh, in, in, a, in a particular in a particular sequence and in a particular uh, order. The ability to process that big data, the ability to process um, uh, the, the ability to process the big data is basically a subtotal of the power that artificial intelligence holds on a global geopolitical stage. Um, according to me, if you have to discuss about the idea of peace and justice, we need to discuss the idea of rights of citizens. And with the rights of citizens, I wish to uh, cite Article 17 of the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, which, which clearly states that right to privacy is a right that needs to be protected from arbitrary and unauthorized access. And even if there is unauthorized access, that has to be within prescribed legitimate state aims. Now, why I'm equating artificial intelligence with the right to privacy is because there are systems, there are web spaces, there are programs such as the open source intelligence system or the social media intelligence systems that serve as a repository of digital trails uh, that help um, AI to detect the, the, the choices and the behavior and the actions by humans uh, based on different activities that they undertake uh, on the internet platform. Um, artificial intelligence and the access that it provides and the, and, the, and the degree of permeability of critical data that it has, it accords, is perhaps the biggest challenge of humanity that we face. We say that we are in this age of big data, in age of technology revolutionizing everything and data being the new oil and data driven technology uh, as being uh, one of the biggest impetus for economic growth and sectoral wise changes. But I think it is important to be investigated from the point of view of it being a threat to peace and 
humanity in the times to come um most importantly artificial intelligence and data capturing technologies uh, that are used in conflict prevention that are used in uh, that, that are used to study and map conflict zones and study the patterns of violence so this is a practice this is a deployment that is taken repetitively and more so in the uh, in 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 the in this particular time by non state actors by corporations by international agencies to retain a sort of control and power over vulnerable swaths of land territories and uh, generally studying conflict prevention there are distinctive features uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence and data capturing technologies now what are those distinctive features there are crowd analysis human facial recognition uh, functions and human action and behavioral action so all of these technologies help in identifying particular traits of an individual particular features of an individual and also the social phenomena of privacy that there is which is uh, determining and predicting the human action so what it does is basically segregates ai enabled technologies segregate the behavior of masses in a particular region with respect to the environment that they reside in a crowd analysis is one of the dangerous aspects which shows the extent to which artificial intelligence can police social and political revolution in cases of uh, social unrest and political unrest um with respect to the facial recognition technology that was recently called out um by the eu privacy law experts which said that it should be banned because it has potential for discrimination it has potential to cripple away dignity and justice and perpetuate discrimination against a particular set of uh people um this whole conversation about artificial intelligence and data capturing technologies and the layout of behavioral uh, surveillance that acts in complete conjunction with each other uh, is something that strikes at the root of justice and peace uh, in different societies and as a global social order the layout of behavioral uh, the layout of behavioral uh, surveillance Uh, is something that with respect to facial recognition technology points out towards a very destructive tendency of ai unleashing tyranny it's, it's a very it's, it's a different anomaly that talks about ai unleashing uh, tyranny because of the fact that it is beyond human, human control the fact that it is uh, unchecked it is undeterred and most importantly the fact that ai enabled technologies and data capturing technologies Uh, are deployed in conflict prevention zones are are deployed in zones that are driven uh, that, that are conflict ridden um it it challenges the human rights of those people residing in those areas such as right to self determination right to freedom of speech and expression um uh, right to safety uh, as well as uh, protection against uh, discrimination because if ai enabled technologies along with its instrumentalities has the potential to predict human behavior to predict human actions to identify uh, humans through uh, intrusive and penetrative technologies it poses a huge risk because it has the it has the potential to predict the 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 event that has not yet happened and talking about it in a tumultuous zone in in a conflict in in a conflict ridden zone this is something that is bound to be discriminated against the vulnerable masses who are at the who are at the um, who are facing the brunt of uh, violence uh, so hence ai enabled technologies and data capturing technologies are something that can be counterproductive with respect to peace efforts. now even if this working paper uh, says that un digital uh, toolkit um, which implores the idea that if big data is you know used in relation or in conjunction with the social media analytics uh, it is something that can help uh, ai to get to the root of this origin uh, of the origin of hate speech or fake news or or disruptive uh, or all the activities that 
disrupt social order. Now, this was about AI da data capturing technologies and behavioral uh, monitoring and, and the layout of surveillance that comes with, which disrupts normal, the, the discourse of civil society as well as the foundations of peace and justice that it effectively crushes down. Um, there is one another interface of artificial intelligence with respect to threatening peace at a rapid pace, at an unchecked pace, and that is the system of autonomous weapon systems with respect to international humanitarian law. Now, the international humanitarian law was basically a product of a framework uh, uh, in the aftermath of the destruction that was brought about by the Second World War to protect the rights of victims to prevent escalation of violence and to hold accountable the stakeholders and the parties to an armed conflict. But with the onslaught of artificial intelligence and the deployment of artificial intelligence as a defense personnel by different states in a means to exchange in modern warfare uh, by deploying weapons like robots and drones and, and missiles, etc., is something that poses a huge challenge to the idea of peace and the idea of uh, safety in the world. Um, the very definition of autonomous weapon systems is something that proves that artificial intelligence and artificial enabled technologies is at the center of the geopolitical arms race because autonomous weapon system is a system that can detect, decipher, select, target, and unleash an attack on civilians uh, in a completely unaccounted for and in a completely disproportional manner. But from the point of view of disproportionality, from the point of view of impartiality, from the point of view of neutrality and independence and impartiality, all of this stands to lose, all of this stands to effectively cripple away. The interface of artificial intelligence and autonomous weapon systems with respect to international humanitarian law and uh, the idea of humanity is such a is such a destructive predicament that experts are trying to get to the root of because with the with the effective uh, with the effective research and with the effective amount of capital that is being put into uh, aggravating the use of AI in different sectors, especially in peace building efforts, especially in, in the sectors of modern warfare, has a direct impact, has a direct relation with, um, with, with the idea of peace, with the idea of justice in, in, in us, in, in, in the world as such. This is not something that is nation specific or area specific or zone specific. This is something that we're talking about a wide construct, a wide region that is talking about data enabled technologies and, and data enabled technologies that are used for monitoring behaviors that are used to uh, monitor conflict prevention and bring about peace efforts. But what is essentially is happening is that it is something that has gone beyond human control, beyond human intervention, which has completely struck the idea of accountability, which goes at the heart of justice as one of the goals that is envisaged by United Nations. Um, when there is no accountability for an attack, um, there is no, um, there is complete ambiguity that surrounds the use of AI in warfare, uh, in conflict prevention, in day-to-day -day using of AI and processing data and ability to visualize data that, that surveils and surveys masses all together. This is something that's deeply, deeply threatening, deeply, deeply unaccounted for. And um, so far, policies and regulations that have attempted to check or seek or have attempted to seek control over the after effects or the negative effects of AI technology have not been successful because the problems still persist. And with respect to the autonomous weapon systems, the, the tyranny and, and, and the lethal force that it unleashes 
and the potential to harm civilians in in one go uh, is something that is completely unprecedented so the, this is these are my broad ideas about uh, reasoning and rationalizing in this session in this in this topic which was about uh talking about artificial intelligence from the point of view of international humanitarian law and uh, the and the point of humanity keeping peace at center keeping the goal of peace at center keeping the diverse idea of peace at center which talks about the factors that are responsible for uh, the crucial determinants that are responsible for long lasting peace and if we have these um unfettered uh technologies that are there in the space surrounding us then there is a huge challenge for uh then then it poses a huge threat to the very existence of humanity so i would like to wrap my thoughts on this very account on this very basis that there has to be a streak of rationalization that holds accountable not just the non state actors or the enforcement agencies that deploy ai to uh, undertake a series of tasks but also the state actors that have gone on to the extent of incentivizing um putting in a lot of uh, capital into ai research and deploying ai for those processes that are essentially to be driven by mutually agreed uh, idea of humanity and justice so thank you so much and uh, thank you for giving me a chance to speak